All right, so welcome everyone to the session. Uh, thank you for joining us or joining me for the systematic review seminar series session number five. This one is going to be on the use of covidence, which is uh, well, you'll see is software to help you perform systematic reviews. We're only going to be here for half an hour, you know, as with all of these sessions. So I'm not going to go into a ton of depth with this, but I'll talk to you at the end about where you can go to find resources to help with this. Um, so to kind of set the stage. This is where we are in the systematic review seminar series, right in the middle, session number five, um, using Covidence, and you can kind of see where whoops, where we've been and uh, some of the future sessions here. So the outline of what I'm going to be talking about here is is presented here. So common difficulties in performing systematic reviews. So I'm going to go through what are some of the uh, issues that often arise for folks who are doing systematic and scoping reviews and what are the, what are the problems they face, um, and, uh, how Covidence can address that. Then I'm going to be talking to you about how you can get access to the software through the Himmelfarb library. And then briefly, very briefly, I'll show how to use Covidence, the basic overview of the structure or of the, uh, functions of it. Uh, and so to back up a moment, um, in the last session, we talked about formulating a search strategy. That was the topic that I discussed last time. And so the naturally, after you complete the creation of a search strategy, you would run your search strategies. You would do your searches in PubMed or, uh, CINAHL and Scopus and all these other databases. But then the issue is, what do you do with the results that you have? You're going to get a. A pile of articles, you know, how are you going to organize those articles? What are you going to do with those articles? And that's where Covidence comes in. So that's, whoops, that's why I cover that right now is a, it's a little bit of a detour from the, the process of doing a systematic review, but this is about the time and the process in which something like Covidence really comes in handy. Um, so let me jump forward to some of the common difficulties that people have in performing systematic reviews. So storing and deduplicating citations, you do citate or you do searches in a variety of different databases. The issue that you run into is going to be, what do I do with all these citations? Um, you can upload them into any, uh, management or citation management program like RefWorks or EndNote. Um, and then you can deduplicate the results. Uh, that's something you can do in those, in those products. The issue though, that you run into is, um, well, is what to do with it after that point. Um, how do you treat the records after that, after that point? Um, so, um, that's one of the things. And the other thing is, since you use multiple databases, you can deduplicate, you have to deduplicate. So if I do a search, a similar search in PubMed, Scopus, CINAHL, and Cochrane, let's say, I would expect of all the results that I get, probably 30% of them at least are going to be duplicates, meaning that they're going to show up in one or more of those or two or more of those databases. So I need to take care of that. I don't want to be screening the same article over and over again. So I need to deduplicate. So that's one thing. General organization. So if you know much about systematic reviews, you know, these are, there's a lot of detail in how to perform, um, uh, uh, there's a lot of, uh, detail and a lot that you have to report when doing one of these. Um, and so Scopus can help with that. And then tracking the input of independent reviewers. Um, as you know, systematic reviews are a team sport. They require multiple people giving input at different stages. And so how do you track that? How do you keep track of how everyone voted on a particular article? Um, and then working with collaborators from different institutions. So you may be working on a review article that is just folks from GW and that's great, but you may be working with folks from other institutions and that's very common. Um, how do you work with those 
people from other institutions. And Covidence really helps with all of this. So I'm going to go through uh, in a moment how to get to Covidence. And then I'm going to go to my Covidence account and then kind of show you how it helps with these things. Um, sorry, well done. So getting Covidence through Himmelfarb, it is freely available to GW students and faculty. So let us, let's go ahead. Sorry, this, there's this thing. There we go. Um, so here we are at the Himmelfarb website. So to get to Covidence, so a couple things. One is we have a guide. Uh, I'm going to put in the chat box. So you all have access to this, but to get Covidence, you're going to go to this guide, the website posted here, and you're going to click on join Himmelfarb Libraries Covidence license. This is what you want. Do not use the free trial because if you do, and then you try to get on our license, it kind of, they mess with each other. So if you've never created a Covidence account, just go to the Himmelfarb license. So when you do that, you'll click here and you'll be brought to this page eventually um, where you request an invitation to be on the Himmelfarb license. Okay. Um, but since I already have an account, so you put in your name and your email address and then you'll you'll be, you'll get an invitation via email. Since I already have an account, I'm just going to go to access Covidence. So I've already logged into my account. This is what it looks like. Each of these is a different project. Some of these are real projects that I've been involved with, and some of them are fake things that I use for classes like this, like this one, practice review. So the way Covidence works is you do your searches and then you're going to upload your results in, you're going to import your results into Covidence. So you're going to do your search in say, uh, PubMed. So I'm going to go to, sorry, I have all these windows in my way, do my search in PubMed and let's see diabetes and metformin and, uh, children. I don't know. Whatever, it doesn't really matter what the search is. I want to move these 766 results into Covidence, and that's where I'll screen them. So as you know from doing systematic reviews, there's a multi-step screening process. Um, it starts with a title abstract screen, which we'll talk more about in a future session. But it begins by saving all your results and uploading them into Covidence. So in terms of how to get results into from PubMed into Covidence, if I go back to this guide that I shared with you, if I go to getting started this tab, there's a lot of videos here from the folks at Covidence. So they're really great videos, but we put in a little thing here on how to use PubMed because it's not intuitive. Um, there's a few steps here. So you run your search, click the save button, select the format PubMed, save the file to your computer, and then import into Covidence. So I'll show you what that looks like. Here's the save button that was referenced. I want all the results, not all the ones on the page or selected results. I want all 766 articles because this is a systematic review and I'm including all articles. The format is PubMed. So that's the file format. Um, so this is what it looks like. Save all results, PubMed, and then create file. And then what it's going to do is give me this notepad file like this. I'm going to save that to my desktop. I'm not going to go through this at this point, but I'll, well, I'll do it in this case. So. PubMed Diabetes AN Set 5. I just want to remember the name of it. So I'm going to save it to my desktop and close that. Then go into Covidence and press Import. So this is where I'm going to bring in my results. So first I select what stage I want them to go into. In this case, it's Screen. 
I wanted to go into the screening stage because I haven't screened these 766 articles. Then choose file, and this is going to be finding that file on my desktop. So here it is, PubMed Diabetes, and then press import. Uh, it's going to bring me back to this and it says import in progress. So it takes a little bit of time to import all of them because what it's doing is it's importing the record, but it's also checking the existing records for duplicates. And if it finds a duplicate, it's going to get rid of it. So it deduplicates as it brings the results in. Uh, the next step of using COVID ends, and you can see this is laid out exactly like you would do a systematic review. Import references, first the title abstract screening, then the full text review, and then the data extraction. Those are the classic steps to doing a systematic review. Um, so I would go here to screen. So I have 9,200 articles to screen in this made up review. I press continue. Here's the title, here's the abstract, I read them, and then I vote. So, no to this article, and then it's going to get rid of it and bring the next one up. Yes to this article. I'm just pretending that I read it. No to this article. Maybe to this article. So you see the process. I'm going to screen through all of the articles in that way. Um, then what happens is you'll see, um, well, so what the other thing is I talked about inviting other people. So if I go to settings here, so settings and then reviewers. So for this particular fake example, I invited myself through a different email address because I wanted to see what it looked like from both perspectives, the person who creates the account and then the person who um, uh, is invited as a reviewer. Uh, and so so there's two people, but I can invite another reviewer if I wanted, and the way it's any anyone from any institution. So as long as the person who creates the account is from GW, they can invite anyone they want. Who creates the project is from GW using our subscription to Covidence. You can invite anyone you want. They don't need a net ID. They don't need a GWU email address. They don't need anything like that. Anyone you want, you can invite to be part of your project. So you send out invitations. Then if you have more than one reviewer, you're gonna go to the review settings and you're gonna say how, how many reviewers are required at each step. So for the initial screening, I said it requires two reviewers, meaning every article has to receive two votes, which if you know anything of systematic reviews, you know that that's a team sport, like I said. And so you're going to want more than one person reviewing at each step. So I said two reviewers at the full text, two reviewers at the extraction, and two reviewers at the initial screen. So what that means is that as I'm voting for these articles, the other, other people who have been invited, they can vote as well. And when they go in, they'll see the same thing. They'll see this screen that looks like this. But Covidence is tracking the votes. So the way it works when you have more than one, let's say you have five people on your team and you invite them all, but you only say that an article in this stage needs two votes in order to be processed. What'll happen is all five people will have access to all the articles, but as soon as two people vote on an article, it's removed from everyone else's queue. No one else will see it because all an article needs the way I defined it was two votes um, and then it's processed. So there's three results of processing an article. Let's say in the case of two voters, if both people vote yes, it moves on to the full text review. That's what these 18 articles, these are the articles that receive two yeses. If it receives two no's, it's titled irrelevant. So it goes into the irrelevant pile, which is tracked here. If the reviewers don't agree, it goes into the conflict pile, which means I click on that and there's three articles that need to be resolved, meaning that the voters didn't agree. So you have to have some process, either a third party comes in and settles it 
or the two people meet and talk it over and come up, come up with a final decision. But Covidence is doing this tracking for you of the votes. That's what I was talking about with, you can imagine how would you do that without a program like this? And there's ways people used to do it with say spreadsheets where there'd be a list of articles, a column, one column would be me and another column would be you and I would vote in my column and then I'd hide my column and then I would send the spreadsheet to you and you would vote and then we'd open both columns and compare the results. That's very cumbersome and time you know, time intensive, this does it all for you. That's one of the huge time savers of Covidence is that with this voting, it's tracking the votes in real time. And like I said, one of the things that people often ask is, well, how do I assign articles? Like I want, you know, me and Joe to look at the first 200 articles and then I want Joe and Helen to look at the next 200 and I want Helen and uh, Mary to look at the next 200. Like you don't assign articles like that in Covidence. Everyone has access to all the articles and they will have access to all the articles until an article receives the specified number of votes and then it's removed from everyone's screen. Um, so hopefully that makes sense in terms of how this voting works. And you can see the progress that the team has made. So 435 articles have received the requisite number of votes to um, 83 of the articles have received one vote. There's three conflicts and there's 9,200 articles that have not received any vote from either person either. Again, I log, I, I have two versions of me voting on this. So neither of, I didn't, when I logged into either account, I didn't vote for, there's 9,200 articles that have received no votes yet. So it gives you the progress of how your project is going. And in fact, if I go to settings and I go to team settings, so remember review settings was where I said how many votes are required at each step. Reviewers was where I invited other people team settings is where I can track the progress. So I can see me number one voted for 503 articles and the other version of me and my other email account voted for 456 of the articles. So you can track how much each person is doing. I mean, if that's of interest to you. Um, so those are some of the things you can track as you go along. Another thing Scopus or Scopus Covidence does is this Prisma thing here. So if I click that, it's showing me a real time, constantly updated Prisma flow diagram of my project. So as I'm voting, these numbers change. Um, so that's kind of a nice feature too, because that's a Prisma flow diagram is gonna be part of almost any published systematic or scoping review. So for those articles that receive two yes votes, we move on to the full text review and it's the same process. I have to upload the PDF. So Covidence won't go out and find PDFs. You have to have access to the PDFs. Um, but again, so full text review, and we'll talk more about this in a, a coming session. This is where you read the entire article and say yes or no. For those that get a yes at this stage, they move on to the extraction. So I'm going to click here. So there's two elements to an extraction. If you're familiar with systematic reviews, there's the data extraction and the quality assessment. Not every systematic review is going to have a quality assessment, but the tools here, if you want. For the, and I'm again, in a later session, I'll talk more about this, but for the data extraction, I have to create a template. So if I click on here, this is the default template. And it's this thing on the right in gray. This is what the form looks like. So as I read the article, I'm pulling out these bits of information and typing them in here. So what's the title? How many participants? I think I made up some of the, I added some of these. How many of the participants were in a hospital setting? This is information that you're pulling out of the article. And again, you're gonna want more than one person doing, extracting each article. Oh, uh, and sorry. 
So going back here, I can change the template though. If I say, uh, you know, as it turns out, I don't need study ID. I don't need this field. So I'm gonna click on that and press delete. So now it's gone. Or I can say, I need a new field, add text field. And then I, whatever, study design. Yeah, so I just added another field. So it has this editor function of creating your own template. It has a default template, but it's almost certainly not going to be appropriate. I see there's a question. I'll come back to that. Um, oh, let me uh, get to this. Um, so adjusting, you can adjust the filters after your initial search to narrow down the results, but I would suggest that if you're doing a systematic review, you probably want to do your filtering in Covidence, the title abstract screen. Like 766 is not a lot of results um, uh, for a typical systematic review. Um, I, if for screening, I would do it within Covidence. And the reason is that um, uh, because you may have duplicates. So I wouldn't screen in PubMed because then if I go to CINAHL, there's going to be some duplication. So if I screen within each database, I'm going to end up screening articles more than once. Uh, example other than PubMed, if I, I may not have time for that, um, but they are on that guide that I shared. It shows there, it basically you're exporting in the RIS uh, format. So it's on that guide that I shared. I'm afraid I don't, I may not have time for it in this, or I probably will not have time for it in this session. Sorry about that. Um, but it's discussed in that guide that I, I shared because I want to get through a couple more things and I, we're coming up to 1230. Um, but this is what it looks like if both people vote. So I voted if both, or both people do an extraction it shows you, oh, okay, reviewer one said 15, reviewer two said 13. Okay, a decision's required. However, for the title, they agreed. For the number of participants, they agreed, but in terms of how many participants were in a hospital setting, they didn't agree, so decision required. So it's gonna guide you through where you have to come to a consensus. Um, the quality assessment template, is the default is the Cochrane Risk of Bias tool, which is a tool for assessing the quality of a randomized control trial. This may not be appropriate for you, so you may want to start from scratch. Like if you're not just doing randomized control trials, this will not, these, these items won't make sense to you and they won't be appropriate. Um, uh, so that's how you would do that. So let me, I'm sorry, let me go back because I know we're running low on time. Um, so the Prisma flow diagram, yes, that if I go there, that can be exported. So I can export the data from that um, if I want to do that. Um, so that is, because I see we're coming to 1230 here, what I wanted to talk about with, uh, with, COVID in. So let me go back to my notes. So we took a quick look and I'm sorry for the briefness of the look of the, you know, our exploration of it. I just wanted to show the basic functions of it. Um, one of the things I want to say is there are a lot of other programs that do similar things to COVID in. So there's Rayon and Distiller and others. And so I'm not saying that COVID in is the best and all the rest of these are no good. Um, if you're used to some other product, like I know in some areas, they'll people really love Rayon, um, so that's fine. If you're used to that, it, they roughly do the same thing. In terms of getting help with this, there's the guide that I shared, but also if you have questions about Covidence, I'm happy to try to meet with you one-on-one -on -one at a later time, or you know, if there's a present to a group or something like that, I'm happy to help with that uh, because. Of necessity, there's no way I could go through everything in Covidence here. Um, but I just want to give you a flavor of what Covidence is about. So in conclusion, there are many steps in performing a systematic review that are time consuming and difficult. Programs like Covidence really streamline the process. So they take hours off of the time required to do a systematic review in relative to 
other ways of doing these. And it's available through the Himmelfarb library for free uh, for you. So thank you very much. We will do a next session in two weeks, October 27th at noon in this WebEx room. And that will be on screening articles. So then I'm going to get into talking about um, uh, talking about doing the title abstract screening in more detail. So let me, if I can do this, oh, a, this is what I wanted. Let me share the guide. So the slides that I have for this, um, the slides and the uh, presentation or the um, recording go on to this guide. So if you want to look at this later, that's where they'll be. I'll try to get it posted as soon as I can, but you can see the presentations and the slides from the prior four sessions. Um, so I'm going to stop recording. <laughs>